Well, Duluth's newest city councillor is no stranger to the job. He was chosen by the city council last week to replace Derek Medved, the at-large city councillor who resigned due to growth in his business interests. Joining us now is Noah Hobbs, who was selected by the council last week to serve the rest of the at-large council term. Noah, thank you very much for being here tonight. What are you bringing to the city council? Yeah, certainly, you know, four years of experience, right, in understanding uh, what it takes to, to do the role and uh, hit the ground running. I think the council's a rather new, uh, has a bunch of new faces on it, and so I think that's something that I bring to the council as well as uh, also being a West Duluth resident similar to, you know, uh, former Councillor Medved. What goals might you have that you'd like to see accomplished while you're on for the next couple of years? Yeah, I think one thing to look at is lowering residential streets, uh, speed limit from 30 miles to, to 20 miles an hour to make it safer for, for children uh, out that are you know playing and walking and all of that and, and decrease the uh, likelihood that a serious accident happens. Uh, I think looking and exploring uh, reducing uh, or eliminating parking minimums for new developments. Mm -hmm. um, which decreases the cost to build and then also promotes a more healthy, active lifestyle and sure. transportation other than uh, just an automobile. Uh, and then I think uh, looking at how do we more quickly get rid of uh, vi uh, vacant or blighted uh, properties and turn those into productive uses. Mm -hmm. I know you're big into housing and I want to talk about housing here in a moment, but first, what are some of the other large challenges that Duluth has? Yeah, I mean, you touch one, housing's big, uh, infrastructure's always big, and then maintaining, you know, a 26-mile long city and making sure that we're providing uh, good constituent service to fix uh, issues. We've had a lot of water lines uh, breaking recently due to the cold and how right. old that infrastructure is. Um, and then also uh, stormwater management is something that we have to figure out as well. So, Councilman, what can the city of Duluth do to provide more affordable housing for its residents? Yeah, we started with the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Fund that was just created uh, earlier in, in this year uh, is, I think, a good first step. Uh, and what does that. that trust fund do? Yeah, so there's uh, some funds that are going to be uh, either 0% or low uh, interest rates uh, into to development projects to incentivize uh, development of housing and creating uh, those units. Um, and so that's a pretty new thing, but it's also happened across the country and other municipalities. And so hopefully we can grow that fund and have some money that would also be uh, gap financing mm -hmm. uh, in the form of the grant. So it's not just, uh, just a loan as well. What are some common complaints you might hear from people who are looking for housing that truly is affordable for them? That it's not there. I mean, that's, that's the biggest one is that uh, we just have a lack of housing uh, across the board. Uh, and so when you have that lack of housing, it also forces housing that normally would be affordable to actually be more expensive. And so we have to add, I think, from the Maxfield study from 2019, about 3,500 units uh, in the next handful of years. And, and that's a big number, but it's a good number. Yeah, it is. Because the city needs to grow, and there's projections that people want to live here. And as long as they have a place to call home, they, they can. Does the city uh, councilman have a sufficient number of rental units right now? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think we have a healthy number of rental units, and I think we'll certainly have to add more with changing demographics uh, as well. As uh, younger generations tend not to necessarily uh, want to be homeowners as much uh, as uh, as older generations, um, but we still have to have that mix of home ownership opportunities that are affordable as well as affordable rental opportunities as well. Because you have such an interest in in housing and making certain that people that there's a stock of housing out there to uh, to be rented or purchased. Um, what what do you think? What 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 is it easy or is it difficult to get uh, funding for housing here in the city? I think it's uh, on the statewide; those dollars are really competitive and they're limited. So the biggest thing that cities can access uh, is the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency for uh, a lot of financing for workforce housing, so moderate to, to low income housing uh, as well. And uh, those dollars are limited, and we're hoping to grow that pot on the state level. Um, and so certainly as that pie grows, we're hoping that it's easier for the city uh, and cities across the state to, to access those funds. If there are people watching this who are contemplating moving to the city of Duluth and would like to either buy or rent while they're here, um, what words of advice would you give them? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, connecting with One Roof Housing is always good, which is my day job. Right. Uh -huh. um, and part of that, we have a first time home buyer uh, education class that uh, connects folks to relevant uh, parties that would be, you know, moving you forward in that home buyer process, inspectors, realtors, bankers, and all of that, and likely qualifies you for first time home buyer mortgages, which makes that purchase more affordable. Um, and then also, I think, uh, you know, looking at the paper for vacancies, which uh, in the rental world, which we have uh, certainly limited, but hoping to, yeah. to have more in the future. Aside from housing, what's the next biggest issue? 
I, you know, infrastructure, I think, is big, and it will likely always be an issue for Duluth, given the fact that uh, we're a city built for 110,000 uh, people, and we've got an 86,000 uh, population right now, and I think so having that growth to better fund our infrastructure um, and increasing kind of the density that we have in our, our business nodes mm -hmm. for both residential and commercial operations. What is the city hoping to get, uh, Councilman, this year from the state legislature? Uh, we've got the seawall outside of the, of the deck is one of the bonding priorities that we have. Um, I believe WLSSD has a, has a request in, um, and then hopefully an increase in local government aid, uh, LGA, which is one of the biggest chunks of uh, funding that it decreases the tax burden on uh, property taxes mm -hmm. in the city. And so that formula is being changed, um, and we're hoping that there's also an allocation, an increased allocation of funds through local government aid sure. as well. Are you still vowing not to seek re-election after you pick up these two terms, uh, the two years uh, from Mr. Medved? Yes, I, I have been public about that, and I will say it if it has to be every council meeting or every interview, I, uh, I'm not seeking election. It, huh? I will continue to say it, and uh, I will fill out the two years and, and let someone else. All right, uh, Noah Hobbs, New Duluth City Councilman. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you.